Oh, welcome to Beer Genius. We added a third, fourth member <laughs> to our tasting group, Mr. Luke. I don't know your last name. Lawler. Floats around. The law don't roll around here, boy. Lawler. <laughs> so, uh, what we're sipping on right now is Boulevard's Dark Truth Stout. It'll be out early next week. Check it out. It's paired with some Christopher Elbow chocolates. There's a dark Venezuelan and a raspberry as well. And Stephen Powell's and Christopher Elbow picked those out specifically to go with this beer. So uh, Boulevard sent me a bottle, so we decided to hang out, taste it, and vibe. Uh, what I'm getting from this is, is, is really sort of a super refined characteristic. I didn't really care for the Imperial Stout that they did. And this is essentially, from what I understand, an aged or an unaged version of that done with a Belgian yeast strain. So you're going to get a whole lot of different characteristics from that that uh, you know, I'm, I'm really sort of liking, actually. The finish, uh, we were just talking about the finish. It's super, super thin, and uh, I kind of have some mixed thoughts on that. Yeah. What do you guys think? Well, when you taste it at first, it's really nice and bold, and then it thins out immediately. And you're expecting it to kind of stay in, like most majority stouts, it finish with a little bit of bitterness to it. Sure. But this is really thin. Like we are talking about, it almost seems effervescent. Mm -hmm. But There's a bit me, of an effervescence. A stout that's taste. effervescent at the end is kind of unexpected but nice. Totally unexpected. You know, I was expecting uh, this to be, you know, I want to taste the chocolate malt mm -hmm. and, and everything else that goes with it, the grittiness. And uh, I'm not getting that from this. And I, uh, I'm pleasantly surprised. I do feel like it's about 80% there, you know, like it kind of cuts short too soon. Like you're sure. almost like, oh, well, I wish it went a little bit, a little bit longer. longer. Yeah, exactly. Like you wouldn't want to necessarily do this with like a braised short rib. You want something. This wouldn't stand up. To no, it wouldn't. This something this, significant for a style. This is it's interesting. Definitely interesting. What do you think, Luke? Yeah, Luke. The nose is somewhat deceptive. It smells like it's gonna be bigger. Uh huh. It smells like it's gonna be more it's, alcohol. It's like this big round yeah. nose. Yeah, it, it smells like it's gonna be really more intense than when you get to the, you know, once you sure. take a sip of it, it comes across a little more mild than what the Absolutely, nose totally will be on. Do you have a knife behind the bar? I'm gonna cut these up. Sure. Yeah. Let's see if the chocolate does anything for it. What is the alcohol, John? 9.7. Uh, 9. 7. Oh, okay. So you do Maybe that's the it. alcohol on yeah. the nose, and then yeah, and it, that's why it's, it's probably more a drier fish. Too. Definitely cannot taste it. It's really well attenuated, and uh, they've done it with the past couple of years. The rye on rye, I don't know if you've had it yet. It's uh, 11 percent. You would never be able to tell. It tastes like a five or six. I mean, that to be honest, for a bomber. And the majority of bombers that you get, I mean, they're session beers for sure. You sip on them. Right. This one, you know, I'm sure it's sold to be sipped on. Yeah, but absolutely. I could go through that pretty quickly. Pretty quickly. <laughs> pretty quickly. I could too. Compared to most stouts. I mean, sure. you put that up against other stouts in the lineup, like Appreciate Oatmeal Stout, mm -hmm. which is one of the best stouts out there. But I, I mean, totally agree. It's definitely more of a session beer. I'm surprised. Sure. There you go. And I have mixed feelings about that. Like, I like it that it, it's got a short finish, but also... When you think stout, you don't think that at all. Totally with you. Does it have the, um, the roastiness? No. It lacks the roastiness for sure. That, whoa. I would like some stout. It is a lot better than their Imperial so Stout that they came out with, which I bought a bottle of that, took it home, and took it. I tried to drink it, I tried to like it, I tried to get into it. No, I didn't I like it. I put it down the drain. I didn't like I it. I could not drink it. And I wanted to like it so bad. So, so we're going to yeah, get it. Uh, so what are what? these chocolates? <laughs> this is oh, a Venezuelan dark. It's a 70% cocoa <laughs> grenache. Sorry, sorry for being mean. Uh, right. <laughs> and this is a raspberry. It has like a raspberry pate uh, with a chocolate grenache on top. See what they do. They were going through this with chocolate now. Yeah. Just a touch of the raspberry. Oh, makes so much sense. Oh, makes so much sense. <laughs> makes so much sense. That's actually quite incredible. Um, I'm not sure how I'll like the. Uh, the Venezuelan dark necessarily, but this this raspberry is yeah, the sweetness and the sourness from it. It matches that light stout profile really well. Certainly, totally agree. 
Oh my gosh. Wow. Well, I mean, I'm far out front. Works really well with the raspberry, the Venezuelan dark, not so much. I have a feeling Mr. Elbow picked the dark and Mr. Powell's picked the raspberry. The dark, the dark, this, this is going to sound really weird, but the dark Venezuelan doesn't stand up to, or it overpowers the beer. The, there's not enough. What did you say the cacao content was on that? 70%. Yeah, it, it needs be to be a bit more bitter. Yeah. Uh -huh. It needs to be more bitter, or you could probably do 70% if you had like some cayenne pepper or something, you know, those chocolates that have a little pepper. They almost cancel each other out. Yeah, it, it, I exactly. I was saying, it's yeah, too much it's of a match for the beer. Well, it doesn't work from the existing characteristics of it and it accentuate it, you know, it's kind of like it's battling. Sure. And I think the chocolate wins, honestly. Yeah, yeah, it really does. It just, I think the raspberry, on the other hand, is unbelievable. Yeah, I do too. The raspberry. I think it's got that sharper profile and the sourness and the sweet kind of run parallels with that effervescent short in the south. Absolutely. Uh, scale 100, this beer, within the style that it's supposed to be a Belgian step. That's tough, because I'm not really sure about that style. Yeah, um, well, I, I don't know a whole lot about it either. I, I, would, yeah. <laughs> I, would, I would rate that, you know, again, low 90s probably. Maybe I, mid, mid 80s. The, I'd almost the, go mid 80s. Yeah, mid 80s. To be honest. Um, I'm, I, I like it. It's very drinkable, but it's not that impressive. Uh, I'm not blown away by any means. I mean, if, if I line place. that up against a Free yeah. State Oatmeal Stout, you know. Which is a totally different style yeah. of stout. And, and you did yeah. Pesha Mortel, like a copy stout, put all the three together. Sure. This would definitely be my third favorite. Absolutely. Not saying it's not an incredibly good stout, but right, 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 right. the spectrum of stouts that we're it's used to tasting good. around this area. Sure. No, I, I think I like more grittiness with it. Now, on the other hand, when paired with that raspberry that we had, it was Mind and another thing <laughs> is that if you're good. if you're somebody who's not accustomed to stouts or right. stays away from stouts because they're so this might be large, nice this is a great that. entry for it. This is a nice entry into into that arena. So I, I'm going to put it an 86. Yeah. Sounds about right. I don't know. I was thinking 87. Oh. There you go. <laughs> was this price well, is right? One dollar. One dollar. I think it's a good beer. It's. Yeah. it's Nothing that makes me say wow, but I, I like sure. it. I think it's good, and I think it's a much better effort than their Imperial stuff that came out. Yeah, I totally agree. Totally agree. Um, you know, I think uh, you get too much of the whiskey charred barrel uh, from the Imperial stuff. This is the unaged version of that done with a, a Belgian yeast strain, which um, is nice, but not all that interesting to me. Yeah. So. I do think, from a food standpoint, this would be a great stout to pair with oysters. I really do. Absolutely. Don't. Just because, it, an ultra briny oyster sure. that is. Just because it is such an effervescent finish on it. Sure. Because you get that big boldness and the oyster will cut right into that and then kind of, like I said, those parallels. And mild enough to not overpower. Yeah, exactly. So, well, thank you so much for watching. Uh, thank you to my guests. So, Cheers. Good time. Cheers.